psychedelics sort of make people aware of realms that are less material, you know, that, that the real sort of, the really rewarding experiences are not necessarily what Wall Street or Madison Avenue or Hollywood wants to deliver to you. I mean, they, those experiences and their synthetic experiences, just as much as a drug experience is a synthetic experience, but they're usually tied with some consumerist, you know, agenda. And, I mean, this is part of the the, the sort of the, the inconsistent attitude of of society. I mean, they want they, meaning I don't know, the corporate hegemony or whatever, I mean, they want people to be addicted to things. They want people to consume things, and not necessarily to drugs, but drugs will do. I mean, they want people to drink and smoke and all these things, you know, and they and they want people to be addicted to their to their cars and computers and, and TV and all that. So, you know, a lot of what it's about is kind of keeping people uh, entertained and focused on these sort of corporate, uh, corporately massaged, corporately created versions of, of reality. The business of culture, any culture, is to perpetuate its cultural models. And if the hallucinogenic plants have not been integrated into the cultural model, then they are definitely seen as dangerous forces for an unpredictable sort of social change. Mm -hmm. Now, if the hallucinogenic plants have been integrated into the cultural model, this is not then a problem. And this is the case with shamanism. Shamanism is the uh, culturally sanctified institution of uh, inner exploration via psychoactive plants. Where psychoactive plants are not present, shamanic institutions tend to become vitiated to rely on ritual or ordeals or uh, other methods of eliciting, eliciting these ecstatic states. Well, the uh, contemporary artist, therefore, has felt a great kinship with the shaman because the archetype of the contemporary artist is that they stand askance from or ajar from uh, conventional culture. And therefore, these are the creative artists, we hope, uh, therefore they contribute a different perspective uh, on ourselves and something that we can uh, learn from. And I think that uh, that's part of the role of sacred art, ultimately, is to show us a higher model of what we can be uh, so that we're pulled toward our highest potential uh, rather than having our negative uh, or materialist sense reinforced. We get that through a lot of our other materialist and very rational culture. In theogens, are inherently threatening to to the culture. I mean, that's I think one reason that they're brutally suppressed. Both when when capitalist cultures or dominant cultures come on indigenous cultures, you know, they're usually bringing another religion, an outside religion, Christianity or whatever, usually incompatible with the indigenous practices. So that's the first thing to go and. The first thing to be attacked, and along with that goes the knowledge of these plants. The church was concerned that the magic of the witches be seen as real, number one, and number two, entirely caused by the agency of the devil himself. And so the church downplayed the operational role that plants had in inducing these states because, after all, if the devil cannot uh, lead you astray without the use of plants, why, what kind of devil is it? 
So in our own uh, historical tradition, there is a curious blindness to the efficacy of hallucinogenic plants. You know, it, it is possible that as the visionary experience becomes more acceptable in our contemporary postmodern culture, um, more and more people may gravitate to those types of experience. And at the same time, we can already see that the traditional religious structures are in a lot of trouble. Uh, they're causing a lot of trouble in the world. Uh, it, it probably w would be beneficial for there to be a kind of consciousness evolution out of fundamentalist belief systems. And uh, you know, I think that the shamanic experience might be helpful in that, in that evolutionary process. As institutions, what they have in common is they discourage individual thought and they discourage critical thinking and they discourage questions, questioning. Um, they encourage that, okay, here's a body of beliefs or cultural norms or, you know, a largely accepted beliefs and you're just supposed to accept it, you know. Don't ask questions, sit down and shut up. You know, accept it and integrate it and be a good, you know, citizen, consumer, whatever the role is decided. Entheogens are inherently threatening because they enable people or sometimes they compel people to reject that. You know, and say, well, maybe there's more to life than, uh, you know, working in a cubicle for some faithless, faceless corporation so I can you know, not have health insurance and die sick and, you know, without a pension and, you know, and just spend my time with that. Maybe it encourages people to, uh, you know, look at, look for different purposes in life than that. And so that's really, I think, what's going on. The problem with the psychedelics is that they, um, dissolve cultural programming and hence inherently have a political charge about them. And actually that's the weakness, you know, of what I have, I'm sort of beginning to, to call the death culture, you know. Um, and, and these things then actually become, in a sense, our own bioweapons, or if we're on the other side of, of this divide, then these plants, you know, especially the plants, become very dangerous in this context. You know, they're trying to suppress them, but you can't suppress them. And they're, you know, they're ways of changing hearts and minds, so they are definitely very, very uh, dangerous. Um, but they can be used in a creative way to counteract kind of the toxic uh, message that the that mainstream culture puts out. I put a lot of time into making sacred art in order to download the shamanic and entheogenic and meditative and, uh, you know, just grace and dream and shamanic journey and all of these uh, kinds of modes of uh, and highly rational thinking about uh, philosophically what are the implications of the worldview that I'm expressing and things like that because for me the artist uh, at perhaps at their best could be uh, I love that word scintilla, you know, Terence always used, could be the scintilla of evolving consciousness, um, as we all can be, you know, but they could express it visually.